All right, we're just waiting on the county attorney to start, and then we'll get the hearing back again. All right. Mr. Grady, if you could please call the next case. The next item is agenda item D2, rezoning application 19-1243. Uh, the applicants are Joey Newsom and Dennis H. Newsom, trustees. The request is to rezone from agricultural rural uh, to agricultural single family conventional one, which requires a minimum lot size of one acre. Uh, Stephen Beachy will provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. Thank Good you. evening. Good evening. Phil Waldron, 2736 Golf Lake Drive, Plant City, Florida. Uh, the applicant is requesting to rezone approximately 10.17 acres from AR to ASC1. The purpose of the rezoning is to build a single family dwelling on this property. And um, the proposed use appears to be consistent with the surrounding land uses, which are primarily ASC1, AS1. And I'm here to answer any other questions. I don't have any, but thank you for your testimony. If you could please sign in. Development yes, Services. Good evening. Good evening, Steve Beachy Development Services. The request is to rezone a parcel totaling 10.17 acres from AR to ASC1. The, uh, with regard to adjacent land uses, they're uh, agricultural immediately surrounding then feathering out further than that. It's um, low density residential to the west and to the north. Uh, the prevailing zoning designations surrounding the parcel are a mix of AS1 and ASC1. Based on a well-established zoning pattern, Staff finds the proposal will, not, proposal will not introduce any new incompatibilities to the surrounding area. No agency objections. Staff finds the request to be supportable. Thank you for your testimony. Planning Commission, please. Jawan Haley, Planning Commission. The subject property's adopted future land use category is residential one. The subject property is located within the urban service area. It is located within the limits. It is not located within the limits of a community plan. The applicant's request to rezone the subject site from agricultural rural to agricultural single family conventional one is consistent with the residential one future land use category. This, the specific intent of the residential one future land use category is to designate areas for rural residential uses that are compatible with short term agricultural uses. Per future land use, per Future land use element policy 16.10, the applicant's request is compatible with the surrounding land use pattern. The surrounding area includes mostly agricultural uses and single family residential homes. Future land use element policy 16.3 recognizes the, uh, the adjacent land uses as being integrated through the creation of like uses or complementary uses or mitigation of adverse impacts. The applicant's request to rezone the subject site to ASC1 is complementary to the surrounding area as ASC1 is located to the west of the subject site on, on the west side of North Wilder Road. ASC1 zoning is also located to the north of the subject site on the north side of Mayday Drive. Overall, the proposed rezoning would allow for the development of this property in a manner that is not only consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the future land use element of the unincorporated Hillsboro County Comprehensive Plan, but that is also compatible and comparable with the existing <coughs> development pattern found within the surrounding area. Based upon these considerations, Planning Commission staff finds the proposed rezoning consistent with the future of Hillsboro Comprehensive Plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone that would like to speak in support? Seeing no one, anyone in opposition to this application? All right, no one. Mr. Grady, anything further, sir? All right, then with that, we'll close rezoning 19-1243 and go to the next case. Next item is agenda item D3, rezoning application 19-1276. Uh, the applicants are Everett F. and Sharon S. Privat. Uh, the request is a zone from agricultural and agricultural rural to agricultural rural. Uh, Tanya Chapella will provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, John Privat, Post Office Box 388, Wymama, Florida, 33598. Um, as you can see, this, this parcel has two zonings now. We just simply want to uh, make it consistent or, or 
contiguous um, and bring it into one zoning. That's all we're asking. All right. Thank you so right. much for your thank testimony. You. If you could please sign in with the clerk's office. Thank you. Development services. Tanya Chapella, Development Services. The request is to rezone approximately 50.1 acres from a total of 81.74 acres from A, Agricultural, to AR, Agricultural Rural. The lot is partially zoned AR. The request is to extend the AR zoning designation to the whole lot area. The site is located outside the Hillsborough County Urban Service Area, and therefore Hillsborough County Water and Wastewater Service will not be available to serve the subject property. Wetland delineation and formal approval by EPC staff will be required prior to the issuance of any building or land development permit. The adjacent and surrounding properties to the north are zone AR, occupied by single, with single family conventional homes or crops. The rest of the surrounding properties, including the adjacent property to the south, the lots along Grange Hall Loop, and the property across Grange Hall Loop to the west are zone agricultural and are being occupied with crops. Staff finds that the proposed zoning district, agricultural rural, is compatible with the surrounding development and zoning patterns. Staff finds that the proposed request is approvable. Um, okay, thank you very much. Question. I don't have any, but thank you. Planning Commission. Juwan Haley, Planning Commission. The subject property is the subject property's adopted future land use category is agricultural rural, one dwelling unit per five acres. <laughs> The subject property is located in the rural service area. It is the property is located within the limits of the Waimama South Shore Area Wide Systems Community Plan. The applicant's request to rezone the subject site from agricultural and agricultural rule to AR is consistent with the agricultural rule, one dwelling unit per five acre future land use category. The specific intent of the AR, one dwelling unit per five acre future land use category, is to designate either those areas of long-term agricultural character or those currently involved in agricultural productivity or other role uses. Policy 16.3 recognizes the adjacent land uses as being integrated through the creation of like uses or complementary uses or mitigation of adverse impacts. The adjacent future land uses north of the subject property are AR, one, dwell, one dwelling unit per five acres, and contain AR zoning with like uses and complementary uses of the applicant's request. For policy 16.10, the applicant's request is compatible with the surrounding land use pattern. The subject site is located within the Waimama Community Plan and the South Shore Area Wide Systems Community Plan. Neither community plan includes any applicable policies or strategies that address this particular area where the subject site is located. Overall, the proposed rezoning would allow for the development of this property in a manner that is not only consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies within the future land use element of, of the unincorporated Hillsborough County Comprehensive Plan, but also is compatible and comparable with the surrounding area. Based upon these considerations, Planning Commission staff finds the proposed rezoning consistent with the future of Hillsborough Comprehensive Plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County, subject to conditions proposed by the by the Development Services Department. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. All right, we'll call for anyone that would like to speak in support. Anyone in favor? Seeing no one. Anyone in opposition? No one. Mr. Grady. Anything further? The applicant. Anything else? All right. That's all. Then we'll close rezoning 19-1276 and go to the next case. Next item is agenda item D4, rezoning application 19-1299. Uh, the applicant is Christopher Ryan. The request is rezoned from agricultural rural to agricultural single family conventional one. Uh, Tanya Chapella will provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Finch. For the record, I'm Michael Horner, 14502 North Dale Mabry Highway. Uh, Tampa 33618, representing the owner and applicant, Mr. Christopher Ryan. <clears throat> Ms. Finch, I think this is fairly straightforward. I'll be brief. It's getting late. Uh, it's a 10-acre tract uh, located west of McIntosh Road, just north of MLK Highway. Junior Boulevard, excuse me. Uh, it is zoned AR. We're seeking ASC1. We have the Res1 plan sector completely surrounding this site. It's in the rural service area, so obviously we have to connect to private utilities only public water and sewers not permitted. 
This is fairly similar to case 1243 that you just heard 30 seconds ago, which was also 10 acres, also Res 1, also AR, and also ASC 1 proposed. Uh, we have sent out all of our letters. I only received one inquiry indicating if we we're going to do 10 lots, we cannot do 10 lots on 10 acres. We don't have the road frontage. This parcel only has 322 feet of frontage. Uh, and we have a flood zone AE designation to the west where there's a tree canopy. My client is only intending one, maybe two maximum of single family homes. Um, my client, as you know, would have to go through an entire commercial subdivision process if he's creating three or more lots to do a certified parcel. It's administrative and only requires uh, creation of one additional lot, which is most likely the route that he would undertake. McIntosh Road is a collector roadway. This parcel is directly across from light industrial in the plan sector. Um, we have unanimous recommendations of approval. We have findings of consistency from the Planning Commission. We have no review agency objections. And I wasn't aware of any opposition, although I did meet a very nice couple before the hearing and understand they were neighbors. They came down here and we had a few comments uh, between each other. They may very well offer testimony tonight, and I'll offer my rebuttal in response. So with that, unless you have any questions, uh, I'll close my presentation. I don't have any questions at this thank time, you. but thank you. All right, uh, development services. Tanya Chapella, development services. The request is to rezone approximately 9.96 acres from AR, agricultural rural, to ASC 1, agricultural, single family conventional. According to the PC staff review, um, the subject property contains wetlands. A wetland delineation and approval by EPC staff would be required prior to the issues of any building, land alteration, or land development permits. The adjacent properties to the north and one to the south are zone AR, occupied by with single family conventional homes. Adjacent to the south and west are several lots, zone ASC1, and across McIntosh Road to the east is a vacant property zone agricultural industrial. Staff finds that the proposed zoning district, agricultural single family, is compatible with the surrounding development and zoning patterns. Staff finds that the proposed request is approvable. I'm glad to answer your questions. I don't have any, but thank you. Uh, Planning Commission. Jawan Haley, Planning Commission. The subject property is adopted future land use category as residential one. The subject property is located within the urban service area. It is located within the limits of the Sefner Mango Community Plan. The applicant's request is to rezone the subject site from agricultural rule to agricultural single family conventional one, ASC one. It is consistent with the residential one future land use category. The specific intent of the residential one future land use category is to designate areas for rural residential uses compatible with short term agricultural uses. Per future land use element policy 16.10, the applicant's request is compatible, com I'm sorry, compatible with the surrounding land use pattern. Future land use element policy 16.3 recognizes the adjacent land uses as being integrated through the creation of like uses or complementary uses or mitigation of adverse impacts. The applicant's request to rezone the subject site to ASC1 is complementary to the surrounding area as ASC1 zoning is located west and southwestern sides of the subject site. The subject site is located with, within the limits of the Sefner Mango Community Plan. Goal one, goal one of this plan encourages the protection of the environment, including wetlands and wildlife. Ha I'm sorry, including wetlands and wildlife habitat protection, while enhancing the community character and ensuring quality residential development. As such, it should be noted that wetlands exist on more than 25% of the subject site. Goal two of the Sefner Mango community plan also encourages residential development that reflects the rural community character. As such, the applicant's request is consistent with this goal and meets the vision of the community plan. Overall, the proposed rezoning would allow for the development of this property in a manner that is not only consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the future land use element of the unincorporated Hillsborough County Com Comprehensive Plan but that is also compatible and comparable with the existing development pattern found within the surrounding areas. 
Based upon these considerations, Planning Commission staff finds the proposed rezoning consistent with the future of Hillsborough Comprehensive Plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Anyone that would like to speak in support? Anyone in favor? Seeing no one, anyone in opposition? Yes. How many do we have? I see four hands, five hands. Okay. If you could all line up and come forward, it speeds up the process. You have 15 minutes each, or 15 minutes total, so that would be three minutes each. And if you'd like to start, that would be great. Give us your name and address, please. Hi, I'm Robert Wellen. My address is 3146 McIntosh Road, Dover, Florida. And I think it's real interesting when you hear a gentleman, with all due respect, from Northdale Mabry that has no idea about the area talking about how you know, he just kind of brushes over the whole situation when he doesn't have a clue what's really going on with the drainage, with the infrastructure, and just the general traffic patterns of the area. Um, I happen to, to live uh, in the property that's just to the north of the subject property. Uh, my property uh, abuts to the property. And, you know, I have a couple of major concerns. Number one is simply the infrastructure. Uh, I mean, he did mention that we don't have any uh, public uh, sewers. Uh, all the properties are on septic, well and septic. Uh, I happen to have almost 10 acres myself. I've got horses. Uh, in our pasture, uh, our septic system alone, or the, the drainage area takes up about a third of a football field for, the, for our drain field, and, and it sits up about yay high. Uh, whenever we have the rainy season, uh, it gets flooded out. And I can't imagine coming in with 10 houses with 10 drain fields. I'm wondering where all the stuff's going to go. And I'm being nice saying stuff, but, you know, everybody knows that septic tanks don't just dissolve the stuff that's in the septic systems without a sewer. So I don't see how that's going to work. So that's a big concern. Uh, the traffic is an issue. I mean, as it stands now, uh, you know, mid-afternoon, uh, we have the traffic backed up from MLK past our driveway without a subdivision being there. I know he says that, that he wants to build a house or two. I mean, I'm a reasonable person. If he wanted to do a variance and build another house for his mother-in-law, I don't have a problem with that. I just don't want a subdivision in our neighborhood because the drainage, um, I mean, you're going to have to build it up. I mean, our house sits on approximately six courses. So, I mean, to, to build there, you're going to have to build the, the structures way up so you're going to, have to bring in a lot of dirt and like I said just the, the drain uh, the uh, uh, drainage fields for the septic tanks are built up this high and when you, when you start building up the land around to already low-lying land I mean all that water's got to go somewhere and I, I just don't see it working and don't don't see it being compatible as they so eloquently stated I just don't see it being compatible as all as a neighbor so uh, that's it. That's, that's really my concerns is the infrastructure, the drainage, and the traffic. All right. Thank, well, you, thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. If you could please sign in. Next, please. Good evening. Thank you very much. My name is Donald Locke. I live at 3015 Shady Acres Road in Dover, Florida, 33527, about 100 yards from uh, Mr. Ryan's property and my problem is the same thing as Robert's I deal with water also between uh, Mr. Ryan's property and my property is what we call a bay head it's a swamp if you build up anything on either side mine or his the water is going to drain into this swamp and eventually spread which gets my property and his property and it's just not a good thing to build homes and if you build a house, like Robert was saying, for your family or whatever, that's one thing. But to get it rezoned for a subdivision is what that basically means. You're rezoning 10 acres to build whatever you want to build. Maybe it's only two now, but if it's rezoned, you've got the, per the, the policy ahead to build whatever you want. My problem is if you build anything of that structure in this particular area we're all going to suffer and it's and the 
the MLK, Martin Luther King, is now widening from a two lane to a four lane. Well, we already know that they're taking 80 feet north of MLK to put asphalt down. Well, there you go. You're covering up more ground with asphalt, and it goes for two miles, that, that new section that they're going to expand to a four lane road. So there's another problem that we're going to have to deal with. And anymore, I don't think we're going to be able to exist as we are now in that same location. That's all I have. I appreciate it. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, thank you. If you could please sign in. Next, please. Good evening. Afternoon. Uh, Freddie Figueroa. I'm at 3030 Shady Acres. Um, I live southeast or southwest of the property. And my only concern is from McIntosh and MLK, there's a, there's a lake. And when it crosses McIntosh, it, I believe it's on the ground. I'm not sure if the map that he's got shows that. Um, so far, it goes down to my neighbor at the end of Shady Acres, and it opens up, and it crosses my property, and it's open. My only concern when they go to putting homes in there, if they, I'm sure they can block the, the, the creek, but also, you know, the water, where's that going to go to? Uh, luckily, my property, it, it, it flows north, and all the water runs to the creek. So when that happens, I don't know what, you know, the effect. Um, they got wetlands on their part. The locks got wetlands. And also, I'll probably have maybe two or three acres that it's all wetlands. And I, you know, I, I don't want to, I'd, I'd love to take all that out and make a pond for my cattle and my horses, but I like the trees also. So that's my only concern, you know, with the, with the road, McIntosh and the traffic, like Mr. Locke said, they're, they're gonna widen MLK. So, you know, that's the only concerns I got, you know, as far as the water, what are they going to do, where are they going to put the homes? Because, you know, consider that back corner is probably going to be wetland. So, you know, you probably have to go further up towards McIntosh. And, and as far as I know, where the property lays out, his property, uh, the Ryans, they got their home in the middle of the property. So I don't know if they're going to go one in the back and one in the front. He's already built a, a structure close to McIntosh. So, you know, I, you know, so my concern is just the basic of the water and what's going to happen with the creek. So. All right. Well, thanks for coming down. I appreciate your testimony. Next, please. Good evening. Hi. My name is Catherine Wellen. I'm at 3146 McIntosh Road. My property is just on the north side of the Ryan property. Um, I'm opposed to the zoning change because the current infrastructure and the current zoning does not support the current development. Um, the applicant recently built a new structure on the property and should be familiar with the zoning requirements, approximately one unit per five acres. So he's already got two on that property and he just went through this rezoning, just finished this building. So you probably already have a previous uh, zoning request for him to do that. So coming back within just months of this other one is kind of confusing to me. Um, the county overall has not invested and the infrastructure in this area to support an additional 10 houses on this property. 10 houses, 10 wells, 10 septic tanks in an area that's already prone to pretty significant flooding. I understand that part of this property is on protected wetlands, so we may not be working with, um, we may be working with significantly less than 10 acres. So do the math on that. What's the net usable amount of property that he actually has to work with? Um, we've owned our property um, for 15 years and have a, there's a very delicate balance regards to the flooding on McIntosh Road, specifically um, on our property. Um, changing the zoning to one house per acre sounds like a planned development or a subdivision. This change will require planned retainage, county water, county sewer, paved roads, a proper turnaround, environmental impact studies, EPA approval, and a minimal amount of road frontage um, for the entrance and exit. The current conditions in our neighborhood is not conducive to this zoning change. Let me refresh your memory about a parcel on McIntosh Road just south of this property, south of the railroad tracks um, at Martin Luther King. A track was broken up there in the last couple years. As a result, there was significant flooding and houses underwater because of the development that took place on that property. I'm somewhat familiar with all these requirements and changes because my husband and I requested a commercial zoning change just a, just a few years ago, and we stood right here in front of this board. 
We were told what the requirements had to be. And we were required to comply with those requirements. Um, these zoning restrictions protect all of us and limited development. When the infrastructure does not support the development, we can't make those changes. Thank you. Thank you for your time and testimony. If you could please sign in with the clerk's office. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Lee Askew, 3031 Shady Acres Road. I'm the new guy out of the group. I uh, picked up and moved out of Carrollwood and moved out to Dover about three years ago. I live on the south 600 feet of said property that we're talking about right now. I can't tell anybody what to do or what not to put on your property. I don't want to be that guy. I, you know, I understand where Don and everybody's coming from with if you want to build an in-law house, I get it. That's, that's not a problem. You want to put another house or two back there for your kids, that's one thing. But when you want to start building 10 homes 30 feet off my front door, which is practically the same woods Ponce de Leon walk through, I mean, there are 100 foot oak trees back there, grandfather oaks that are just, I mean, they, they, they've got to be more than 40 or 50 years old, most of them. And, and, and then the river, the, the, the canal that runs through the back of it, it, it's no more than 30 feet off of that property line. So I just don't understand where all the rooms going to come from. I don't understand how they're going to get cars in and out of the place. I've not seen one single drawing or blueprint or anything about what I'm disagreeing about right now. You know, so, I mean, as a professional land surveyor, I would at least like to see something what I'm disagreeing with before I disagree with it. I mean, I don't want 10 houses behind me. That's a wrap. Everyone knows that. Okay, I moved out here for the peace and quiet. But, but with the water, I live on this, the bayhead. The bayhead that Don and everybody's talking about, that's my property. That's my one acre out of my four that I own. And so when that thing floods, yeah, you're right. It will flood my driveway out. It floods everything. It floods Freddie's cow pastures out. You know, again, I, I, I guess until I see something in writing that shows me what's going to go on and how this is going to be done, I'm going to have to say no. And that's it. Thank you for coming down. I appreciate it. If you could please sign in with the clerk's office. All right. Seeing no one else in opposition, we'll close that portion of the testimony. County staff, anything additional? Uh, no further comments. I, again, will note that if uh, those who spoke uh, have any questions regarding uh, filing of oral argument in order to speak in front of the Board of County Commissioners for Nana Quinones is available to answer any questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Horner, you have five minutes for rebuttal. Thank you, Ms. Finch. I'll be brief. I, I, I don't know where I misled <laughs> the opposition, the neighbors. Our filing was very clear and very specific. We filed for a zoning district that is absolutely 100% consistent with a comp plan. We are in the middle of Res 1, where the county has earmarked for one unit per acre. I told all the neighbors, and I told everyone that are filing, we are not doing 10 lots. Do not take 10 acres and divide by one acre and get 10 lots. We have a flood zone. No, sir. I'm sorry. Continue, Mr. Horner. We have a wetland. We cannot do infrastructure. Anything we do has to go through all of Hillsborough County's permitting and EPC and septic tank and well. And we have to go through access management. And we have to go through permit criteria for building issuance. That is why my client said one house, maybe two maximum, because that's all he has room for. We can't encroach into a wetland without a jurisdictional impact assessment. My client can't even pull a building permit without EPC jurisdictional survey on that site. So when I hear infrastructure, 10 lots, roads, traffic, my client is asking for the same zoning district that exists on 90% of the surrounding property. If anything is the anomaly here, it's the AR zoning, which is just a small portion to the north. Every other parcel, northwest, west, southwest, south, above the north of the AR is 100% ASC1 zoning. ASC1 does not mean subdivision. ASC1 means you are asking for the right to build a single family house on one acre. And that has to meet all Hillsborough County requirements. And I think, as I heard the testimony, they have no objection to one or two lots. 
I think that's all we're asking for. And that's dictated by rules that are promulgated by EPC, Hillsborough County, the site review process, and we have no flexibility in that. We're not seeking any waivers, any variances. We're not asking to fill any wetlands. My client is simply asking for ASC1 consistent with all the other zoning districts in the Res 1 plan sector. Mr. Horner, do you know um, of the, I have the acreage listed as 9.96 acres of that, what it, are the wetland acreage on the property we, approximately? We don't, I don't have a jurisdictional survey. My client has to obtain that. We have to have our wetland consultant go out and walk that site with EPC. He's aware of that. Looking at the flood zone, the AE, and I'm going to file a copy of that survey into the record for you, you to review. I would say 40, 40% 40 at least is going to be wetland. My client can't touch that western side. I don't know why they think we're blasting through a wetland system to do one single family house. It makes no sense. It would be so cost prohibitive with impact justifications and drainage. I'm not going to say any more. I think our case has its own merit. We have complete staff recommendation for approval. We're consistent with all comp plan policies. All right. Thank you very much for your Thank testimony. You. And with that, we'll close rezoning 19-1299. And no, sir, the opposition testimony has been closed. And we're clo sir, sir, you are completely out of order. That, Mr. Mr. Grady, if you could please call the next case. The next item is agenda item E1, rezoning app. Sir. Next item is item E1, rezoning application 19-0404. Uh, the applicant is Bali Properties, LLC. Uh, the request is rezoned from residential single family conventional six to a planned development. Uh, Connelly Marshall will provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. Is the applicant here? Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Fox. <laughs> Pardon me one, one moment. No worries. Uh, good evening, uh, Ms. Finch and members of staff and council. Uh, my name is John Grandoff. My address is Suite 3700 Bank of America Plaza, and I represent Bally Properties this evening, uh, which is uh, Aram and Claire Galusian. If you please raise your hands so the hearing officer can recognize you. And also our engineer this evening is Mr. Tim Healy, who has placed the site plan on the uh, overhead. And also our transportation planner is Ms. Libby Rodriguez, who prepared the uh, design exception uh, materials. Uh, in summary, uh, this is about a five acre piece for 38 townhomes. We're rezoning to a PD. Uh, what is significant about the staff report is there are no objections uh, to the buffering uh, variation, no objections to the wetland delineation. Uh, the wastewater and uh, water will be public uh, through the City of Tampa Water Service and to the uh, county, Hillsborough County wastewater system. What's significant is uh, Manhattan north of uh, Waters, where this property is going to be located, is substandard and required a design exception with also coordination with Tampa Electric Company and with the uh, private utilities that are in the right-of-way. We've, able to, we've been able to uh, work on an improvement in which the utilities will be buried to make the right-of-way wider and to accommodate the design exceptions which were handled by Ms. Rodriguez. Uh, the staff report finds the project consistent and uh, the design exceptions are detailed at condition 7 uh, on page 7. And um, last but not least, uh, Mr. Grady's signature is indeed on page 8. Uh, which we've located. Uh, the uh, Planning Commission found the project consistent, and I'll uh, let their comments uh, speak for themselves. Tim, would you please point out the, uh, the, the uh, site plan first to demonstrate that to Ms. Finch? Uh, you see a good amount of wetlands uh, noted in blue. Uh, the project uh, is, is, is preserving those wetlands. You'll see the entrance over to the east on North Manhattan and the uh, alignment of the uh, townhome buildings uh, in, in the perimeter area. Tim, would you put the uh, elevation on the uh, Elmo also? This is the elevation of the townhomes. 
and if you would file that with the clerk, Tim, the elevation, you can keep the site plan. You know, and go ahead and file the elevation with her also. Okay. And that is all we have at this point. Thank you. I had just had one question, yes. and that pertains to um, the gated pedestrian access. Yes. If you could uh, just elaborate that on, it, I noticed in Mr. Ratliff of the county staff talks about the need for connectivity and how that's going to be satisfied by the gated pedestrian access, the daily use of project residences. Can you show me on the site plan where that is and how that would work? Bring the site plan back. Tim, point out the gate location at the entrance on Manhattan. There's a microphone there. You'll need to be on the record. Thank you. Uh, Tim Healy, Frontier Engineering, P.O. Box 444, Tampa, 33677. Um, we have one gated access on the plan on the north side right here. Um, and we also have a gated access on the south end of the property right here. The applicability of these gated access right now because uh, of course we don't have connectivity to the southern piece. It's not developed, but we, we've got that in place. We talked with Colleen Brian and staff, and we were just uh, preparing for the future connectivity on those. Uh, this, this gate over here to the north, uh, I, would, I would reach back out to staff to say, you know, uh, we, we could provide connectivity. I don't know, and I'm asking staff right now we will provide a gate there. I don't know if we want to provide public access from a private uh, townhome development to the north versus ours. Uh, we, it leads to some discussion here of whether we want people coming into our site, us coming into their site. So I would ask staff to look at that as well right now to the, the north connectivity. All right, Mr. Yeah. Randolph, that's the intent of my question, is how, not does, the main that, how does that work? Yeah. But not, not the main entrance. Not the main Manhattan. entrance, the okay. pedestrian connectivity. Okay. And on the north, it's not available because it's already built out. Understood. Uh, Tim, would you explain to Ms. Finch why the connectivity does not work on the western side? Uh, yeah, the western side is now currently uh, all wetland, so we would not have pedestrian connectivity on the western side. So the point of my question is the access so they're available the gates will be installed and they're available to for those pedestrians on the that live on the subject property to exit the yes. property yeah. but not conversely adjacent parcel property owners to come onto your property is that the intent that's correct i see that's okay correct. that was the intent of my yeah. question yeah. Okay. thank you very much does that conclude your presentation that concludes our, thank you for the question thank you for also. your time absolutely okay. development services good evening Colleen Marshall Development Services. The applicant stated the request is to rezone approximately 4.58 acres to plan development to allow for 38 single family attached townhomes. Site is located on the west side of North Manhattan Avenue, approximately 660 feet north of West Waters Avenue. The applicants requested to reduce the required five foot wide buffer adjacent to the southwest corner of Folio 23955 uh, to zero feet that's um, in the northwest corner of the site. Um, the required type A screening will be provided. Um, the adjacent folio is currently developed with a single family home. In order to provide the required sidewalks on both sides of the proposed townhome driveways, the sidewalk encroaches into the five foot buffer for a total of 14 linear feet. The required five foot buffer will be provided along the remainder of the shared property lines and a six foot high fence will be provided, provided the entire length of the shared property lines with its single family home. Staff has no objection to the proposed variation. The applicants also requested to waive the additional two feet of building setback per, 
for every one foot of building height over 20 feet. Given the significant wetland area on the southern portion of the site, a narrow area remains for development, which is further reduced by the center drive aisle and the sidewalks. The property to the north is developed with townhomes and permitted a setback of 15 feet along the shared property boundary and a maximum, feet, a maximum height of 35 feet without an additional setback for buildings over 20 feet in height. Given the similar use and constraints on the property due to the wetland area, staff has no objection to this request. The surrounding area is a mixture of residential development and commercial development along Waters Avenue. Many townhome and multifamily residential developments exist in the immediate area on the north side of Waters Avenue. Staff finds a request compatible with surrounding development pattern and recommends approval of conditions. Did he answer any questions? Um, no, other than I just wanted to clarify, I think I, I understand the intent of your condition number two, where it talks about maximum building height, 35 feet. That the parentheses after that where it says no additional setback over 20 feet shall apply. You mean the two to one setback of Correct. over 20 feet in height? Right. Just to clarify, yes. okay, perfect. All right, that was it, my only Thank question. You. Thank you. Planning Commission, please. Joan Haley, Planning Commission, the subject property's adopted future land use category is residential 20. The subject property is located within the urban service area. It is not located within the limits of a community plan. The applicant is requesting to rezone the 4.6 acre property from residential single family conventional six to plan development. The, pre the, the, the proposed plan development would allow the, the development of a 38 unit single family attached residential subdivision. This use would be compatible with the surrounding area given that the subject property is surrounded by existing townhomes, condominiums, and other proposed multifamily and single family residential land uses, thereby adding to an already diverse mix of housing in the community. To the southeast is an, is an existing retail center which will provide goods and services to the proposed residential development. The site is located within the urban service area. As per policy 1.2 of the future land use element, these sites are to be developed at a minimum of 75% of the allowable density per the land use classification. The site does not meet minimum density threshold. However, the site meets the exception to the minimum density policy for development that would not be compatible with the, with, with the existing development pattern of the area specifically with the adjacent single family properties to the south and west. Wetlands are another factor as to why the site is unable to meet density requirements, which are located on the western and southern portion of the subject site. As the wetlands account for more than 25% of the total site acreage, the maximum development potential of the site is 84 units. Although the applicant is only requesting 38 units, the proposed density will have a reduced impact on the wetlands on site, and the wetlands will also act as a natural buffer to the proposed residential to the west, which will further ensure compatibility with neighboring properties. Overall, the proposed rezoning would allow for the, for the, for the development of this property in a manner that is not only consistent with the goals and objectives of the future of Hillsborough comprehensive plan, but that is also comparable to the existing and planned development pattern found within the surrounding area. Based upon these considerations, Planning Commission staff finds the proposed plan, de plan development consistent with the future of Hillsborough comprehensive plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County, subject to conditions proposed by, by, the, by the Development Services Department. Thank you. Excuse me. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this application? Anyone in support? Seeing no one, anyone in opposition? Seeing no one. Uh, county staff, anything further? All right, Mr. Grandolph, anything additional? Yes, just briefly, Ms. Finch. I, I think it's important that uh, Jawan's uh, paragraph on the top of page five is very instructive about how compatible this project is given the wetlands. Um, also, the uh, public water connection, 
public sewer connection, and last but not least, the improvement of Manhattan, I think are all demonstrable of compatibility. We respectfully request your recommendation. All right, thank, thank you for your testimony. And with that, we'll close rezoning PD 19-0404 and go to the next case. The next item is in item E2, rezoning application uh, 19-0835. Uh, the applicant is Jennifer Curry Balomo. Uh, the request is to rezone from CG to plan development. Uh, I'll provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. Is the applicant here? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Michael Flowers. I'm with McNeil Engineering. Our address is 15957 North Florida Avenue in Lutz. Um, here on behalf of the applicant. I will make a very abbreviated presentation and be available for any comments if, uh, should you have any. I want to come over here if that's okay. Absolutely. So, um, good. Yeah, I was looking up there. I didn't see it. So the site's generally located at the northeast corner of Broad Street and Dale Mabry Highway. This is uh, a uh, copy of a paving uh, grading and drainage plan circa 1984 that uh, best appears to match the existing conditions today, just for frame of reference. This is an aerial map with the existing conditions existing 8,000, just under 8,000 square foot building. There's a smaller building back here in the back, a retention area that was designed. Um, you can see the boats out front here. Uh, it used to be a car lot, and there's uh, open storage in the back where they've got semi-trailers parked. The parcel to the north is heavily wetland, and you can see the uh, wetland setback coming onto the property in view at that location. The uh, staff mentioned in the staff report that there's two different uh, options to this, option one and option two. Option one uh, predominantly leaves the site as is. We adjust some buffer fencing and the area of the open storage to come in line with the front of the existing building. Um, and there's some enhancements and stuff for the landscaping that I'll talk about at the end of the presentation, but essentially it's pretty much the existing use that's there today. I would also like to point out that um, this is a voluntary action on behalf of the applicant uh, to bring it into compliance. There's been no cited issues or anything like that from the standpoint of conformity, but uh, an option that the client wanted to do to bring forward to bring the open storage element to make sure it was crystal clear that it was a, a allowed use by going to PD. Option number two for the site would be removal of the existing facilities and the construction of a three-story uh, climate-controlled self-storage facility, um, 33,700 square, square feet on the base floor, three stories total, so 101,000 square feet, uh, parking in the front, a uh, little bit of open storage in the back and, and on the north side. The next thing that I would like to point out is we've re requested a couple of PD variations. Um, I'll show those in just a second. These are the elevation views of the anticipated structure. It's open in the middle where they can drive through to unload and load um, the mini storage area on the north and south elevation. Um, and then that is your east and west elevation for option two. Maximum building height would be under 50 feet. And then the item I was getting ready to discuss was the PD uh, variances that we've requested as it would pertain to this area up here. Again, this is heavily uh, wooded and uh, wetland area with regards to this little area right here along the south side and on the east side, which are adjacent to some residential areas. We just wanted to point out this exhibit that's uh, part of the application and that would be under the current CG zoning, we could have an eight foot buffer and be parking cars nose into it, in essence, just having an eight foot buffer. With a traditional open storage classification, we would be required to set back 30 feet with a six foot high wall. So what our proposal is, is to have that same eight foot with a six foot opaque uh, fence, have the ability 
for showing perspective as far as the distance. So the open storage element would be the same distance away as it would be with the traditional open storage, but basically we're wanting the ability to be able to park cars in that area and should there be an open storage such as illustrated here like an RV, the keys would remain with the office to where they could move uh, as people would come and go. So it wouldn't be that someone would be trapped in there. But again, just wanted to focus on the fact that what we're requesting is actually an enhancement over the existing condition um, because we're adding the additional landscaping and we would have the uh, opaque fence that's not there in the current condition. So we're in, recommenda uh, in agreement with all the recommendations and the staff report. Um, just seek your approval of the request as noted, and I'd be available to answer any questions that you may have. My only question was to clarify what you were doing instead, and your graphic answers that, so thank you very much. And I assume you're submitting those into the record? Yes. Okay, okay. perfect, thank you so much. Development Services. Brian Grady, Hillsborough County Development Services. The request is to rezone to plan development, a 3.16 acre parcel located at the northeast corner of Dale Mabry Highway and West Broad Street. The applicant is requesting two options. Development options, uh, option one would be uh, recognize existing building for 9,180 square feet of CG commercial general zoning district uses and open storage. Option two would be a 103,050 square foot mini warehouse facility with accessory boat and RV storage. As noted by the applicant, the applicant has requested uh, uh, variations to required buffering and screening. Uh, staff does not object to those uh, requested variances outlined in our staff report uh, due to along the northern boundary and eastern boundary the existence of wetlands and and uh, ditches and provides a sufficient uh, adequate buffering and screening in those areas and then as outlined in the southern boundary uh, uh, along West Broad Street because West Broad Street is less than 50 feet and wide uh, per the code it's considered adjacent and therefore required to buffer and screen in accordance with the code uh, staff does not object to the alternative buffering screening as outlined by the applicant in this presentation. Uh, with respect to compatibility, staff finds the proposed request compatible with the surrounding area. The parcel is located along North Del Mary Highway, a six-lane divided arterial highway with a commercial zoning to the, with commercial zoning to the north, south, and west along Del, the Mel, Del Mary frontage. The residentially zoned parcel to the northeast is vacant and contains a large wetland area. To the east is a narrow strip of approximately 30 feet in width zoned RC9 that contains wetlands and a ditch with county owned land further to the east. Portions of the residential south across West Broad, West Broad Street are zoned commercial neighborhood and are therefore legally non conforming uses. The other residential is zoned RDC 12 residential duplex conventional under development option one. The proposed CG district uses are pres presently permitted under the current zoning and the proposed or open storage will be adequately buffered and screened from adjacent parcels. The proposed mini warehouse facility under development option two is also permitted use under the current CG zoning district. The proposed maximum building height of 50 feet is also consistent with the maximum building height under the current CG zoning district. While the proposed maximum square footage of 103,050 is an increase over the maximum permitted under the current CG zoning district, which is a 37,165 square feet. The Pro's mini warehouse is meeting all required setbacks from project boundaries for the Pro's building height and bulk. Uh, based on the above consideration, staff defines request approval subject to conditions. We have to answer any questions. I don't have any, but thank you. Planning Commission. Jawan Haley, Planning Commission. The subject properties adopted future land use category is Office Commercial 20. The subject property is located within the urban service area. It is not located within the limits of a community plan. The proposed development would allow for two options. Option one is 9,180 square foot building for commercial and office uses. Option two is a three-story self-storage facility with maximum of 762 climate controlled units and 18 self storage units with a total maximum building square footage of approximately 103,050 square feet. The applicants request to rezone the subject site from commercial general to plan development for both options is consistent with the office commercial 20 I'm sorry future land use designation. The specific intent of the OC20 future land use designation is to recognize existing commercial and office centers and provide for future development opportunities. 
the request meets commercial locational criteria per policy 22.2 of the future land use element, which recognizes commercial development to be scaled with the land use and classification of roadways as shown on the adopted highway cost affordable long range transportation plan. The request is under the is under the permitted floor area ratio of 0.75 with an acreage of 3.16 acres and a floor area ratio of 0.75. The maximum square footage allowed on the site is 103,237 square feet. The site is located on the east side of Del Mabry Highway, which is classified as a principal arterial highway. Development of higher intensity non-residential land uses that are adjacent to established neighborhoods shall be restricted to collectors and arterials. This request meets the intent of policy 16.5 of the future land use element. Although the 3.16 acre site is not located within the limits of a community plan area, the community design component in the future land use element of the comprehensive plan contains policy direction about designing developments that relate to the predominant character of the surroundings. It further states that new developments should recognize the existing community and be designed in a way that is compatible with the established character of an, art, of an area. The existing development pattern surrounding the subject site along the Del Mabry Highway corridor is mostly commercial, with some residential uses to the south of the subject site on the south side of West Broad Street. The site demonstrates a design sensitive to the nearby residential development to the south. The applicant is providing fencing along the southern boundary to mitigate impacts, which is consistent with policy 16.3. Overall, the proposed rezoning would allow for the development of this property in a manner that is not only consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the future land use element of the unincorporated Hillsborough County Comprehensive Plan that is also compatible and comparable with the existing development pattern found, pattern found within the surrounding area. Based upon these considerations, the Planning Commission staff finds the proposed plan development consistent with the future of Hillsborough comprehensive plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County subject to the conditions proposed by the Development Services Department. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone that would like to speak in support? Anyone in favor? Seeing no one, anyone in opposition? All right, Mr. Grady, anything else, sir? All right, then we'll close rezoning 19-0835 and go to the next case. Next item is agenda item E4, major mod application 19-1017. The applicant's SRQ Pet Medical Group LLC. The request is rezoned from, uh, is, the request is for a major modification of existing plan development. Uh, Michelle Heinrich will provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. Good evening. Good evening, thank you very much. My name is Susan Swift. I'm the planning services leader for Mazer Consulting Florida. And we're located at 5471 West Waters Avenue in Tampa, 33634 Suite 100. I'm here representing Mr. Krajewski and his wife, Dr. Krajewski, who is the veterinarian. And they're um, applying for or requesting to modify and update this old plan development, which dates back to 1991. Um, the application is for the same 14,000 square feet uh, that was originally approved, of building that was originally approved on that site and is currently in effect, and that's on 1.85 acres. Uh, the biggest uh, changes in this application are one, just adding a small pet boarding and grooming business to the vet clinic and the offices, which were already permissible in this PD. And then um, changing the layout to a much improved site plan over what is currently approved. Um, there is a very minor screening variance on the south side that we are also requesting. That's really a technicality because there's, um, that screening would be uh, along the south property boundary and there's uh, probably a 100 foot distance with a very dense wetland and also the 30 foot wetland buffer on that side. And then the properties, the residences to the south also already have a uh, vinyl opaque fence on that side as well. Um, 
as I mentioned, we, we think that this uh, site plan is much improved over the old one. Um, the application's consistent with the surrounding area. It's compatible with the comprehensive plan and the river view plan. And um, we believe very appropriate for this particular site. It is the same size as the originally approved um, site plan for this site. And um, it preserves the wetland, adds a 30-foot wetland setback, and saves most of the trees on the site. It also uses the burner lane um, intersection, so there are no new uh, curb cuts or driveways on 301, something that DOT loves. Um, there are the three uses, office, vet vet clinic and um, the pet boarding and grooming are coordinated and related uses and the site plan will be um, very integrated. There's a cross access easement to the subdivision behind and also Burner Lane will be paved. It's currently a dusty uh, dirt road or a dusty shell road. Um, it'll be paved uh, past our driveway and uh, we'll also have curb and drainage, and the drainage will be improved, and again, a sidewalk um, that will be on uh, the south side of the property, the, the south side of the burner lane. Um, the buildings and the uses will be clustered and moved toward the front, which is something the Riverview plan it encourages, and they'll be much further from the residences to the west, uh, east, sorry, um, on, there'll be 127 feet, the buildings will be on the, from the west side, and 90 feet on the south side, and uh, last but not least, the, all the buildings will um, be more compatible in architecture to residential styles, uh, they'll have pitched roofs, and um, we've committed to a condition that has all four sides having the same architectural features and, you know, and windows, so there are no blank sides. Um, we agree with the staff recommendation of approval. Uh, we agree with the conditions that they've stated, and we um, uh, would love to have uh, your recommendation of approval as well. Uh, Mr. Krajewski, Krajewski and I are here along with our engineer if you have any questions and thank you very much. Thank you. I don't have any questions at this time, but I appreciate it. Development services, please. Good evening. Good evening, Michelle Heinrich, Development Services. As you heard, this is a major modification to a portion of a PD that was originally zoned in 1991. <coughs> And the area of modification is the easternmost 1.85 acres to uh, along 301. The PD does allow for a 24 lot mobile home subdivision and office uses um, that are access to US Highway 301 via Burner Lane. There's no change in the residential portion of the PD. Um, in the non-residential portion, the applicant seeks to add one commercial general use, which as you heard is the boarding and grooming use. And it is, um, I should state, an indoor use. It's not any outdoor kennels. And this would be in addition to the already office uses that are permitted. Also, as you heard, they are looking to update the site layout with no increase in square footage. And it will basically change from two 7,000 square foot buildings that were in parallel, one behind the other to 301, to as you heard, one consolidated building in a 14,000 building envelope closer to 301. The revised layout does increase the distance from the residential to the west by about 80 feet, and it decreases the distance from residential to the south by about 45 feet. There is no change in the previously approved building height. As you heard, one PD variation is requested, and that's along the southern boundary. For this type of use, a 20-foot buffer with type B screening is required. The applicants propose to um, provide the type, uh, or I'm sorry, the 20-foot wide buffer, but ask for a waiver to the type B screening. And that is for the reasons, as you heard Ms. Swift state, there is a vegetated um, wetland that exists 
between their building envelope and the southern property. Also, there is significant distance from the homes to the south from their property line and also an existing fence. So a 20-foot buffer but no screening is the proposal due to the wetland? Correct. Okay. It's a vegetated wetland. Got it. An exercise area for the grooming and boarding business is proposed along the south of the building envelope. This location meets the distance requirements and the area will be screened with the six-foot high white PVC fence. Additionally, the applicants have agreed to customer hours of operation from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And again, this is an indoor facility. The applicants have also agreed to maintaining and enhancing the previously required condition that requires the buildings be residential in appearance. And this includes buildings that will have a pitched roof, windows on both the western and eastern facades, architectural finishing along all sides, and a common theme found on both the western and eastern facade, so both the facade facing the west and the, to the east facing US 301 are both improved. Um, also, the, uh, the overall area is developed with residential and non-residential uses along US Highway 301. Staff finds the modification will not impact the compatibility of the area due to the improved site layout, enhanced building design, and limitation of uses. The non-residential portion is accessed via an easement over Burner Lane, which right now is a private roadway. Burner Lane is a substandard two-lane roadway in poor condition, and it's used by both the residential and the non-residential portions of the PD. This roadway has been approved for a design exception, and as you heard from the applicant, some of those um, improvements still will be made despite the design exception approval, and that includes 12-foot wide travel lanes, curbing, and a sidewalk along the south side of Burner Lane from the project entrance to 301. Um, staff has received no objections from reviewing agencies, and the proposal has been found to be consistent with the comprehensive plan, and therefore we do recommend approval subject to proposed conditions. All right, thank you for your testimony. I appreciate it. Planning Commission. Jawan Haley Planning Commission, the subject property's adopted future land use designation is Suburban Mixed Use 6. The subject property is located within the urban service area. It is located within the limits of the Riverview and South Shore Area Wide Systems Community Plan. The Suburban Mixed Use Future Land Use category allows up to a 0.35 floor area ratio for office uses, research corp research corporate park uses light industrial multi-purpose and mixed use projects. A maximum of 28,205 square feet could be considered for an office use on the 1.85 acre subject site. The applicant is proposing one to, one to three buildings totaling 14,000 square feet or a 0.17 floor area ratio, which is consistent with the suburban mixed use six future land use category. The subject property is located in the urban service area where growth and development should be directed according to the future land use element of the future of Hillsborough, the future of Hillsborough comprehensive plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County. The Riverview community plan also includes, a, includes several goals that are in alignment to the requested modification. Goal one seeks better site and building design that is compatible with the river with review views overall vision the applicant has agreed to a building design that will require a residential style architecture including a pitch roof per the proposed conditions windows will be windows will be required on both the western and eastern western and eastern facades of the building and both of these facades will be required to have a similar quality design. These conditions of building design for the subject property are consistent with the vision of the Riverview Community Plan. The Community Plan also includes policy direction with regards to connectivity. Goal 4 emphasizes the importance of providing for safe and efficient transportation systems, including vehicular, bicycle, and pedestrian traffic. The applicant is constructing a five-foot sidewalk on the north side of the site that will connect to the existing sidewalk along the west side of U.S. Highway 301, consistent with the, with the Riverview Community Plan vision. The Riverview Community Plan Goal 9 focuses on attracting and supporting local businesses and employment. 
The proposed uses of an office, an animal hospital, and a pet boarding with grooming would help to fulfill this vision. Typically, a non-residential use in the suburban mixed-use six future land use category is required to meet locational criteria or request a waiver to said criteria. Because the subject property is located outside the required distance from a qualifying intersection, a waiver to locational criteria has been, has been requested by the applicant per future land use element policy 22.8. Planning Commission staff recommends approval of the waiver request based on the compatibility of the proposed business with the surrounding area. Though the surrounding area contains residential development, the site has been designed to provide for a separation between the proposed use and the, ex and, and the existing residential uses. For instance, the parking area on the proposed site plan is placed on the far western portion of the site, helping to mitigate the noise and activity from the buildings themselves, which are located closer to U.S. Highway 301. Also, the wetland conservation area on the southern portion of the site helps to provide a buffer from the existing residential to the south. The existing private roadway burner lane acts as a buffer to the residential homes to the north. Regarding the compatibility of the use, the applicant has agreed to operating hours of 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. for the pet boarding and grooming use, as well as a six-foot high PVC fence around the dog exercise area. These conditions of approval will help to mitigate compatibility concerns and are consistent with policy direction. The proposed, the proposed modification is also consistent with the future land use element policy 16.5, which focuses non-residential land, land uses along arterial and collector roadways and external to established neighborhoods. The request is consistent with the future land use policy 16.1 as well, which protects neighborhoods by limiting commercial development in residential land use categories to a neighborhood scale. The applicant is proposing less than half of the square footage that could potentially be considered for this site in the suburban mixed use six future land use category. Based, based upon these considerations, Planning Commission staff finds the proposed major modification consistent with the future of Hillsborough, future of Hillsborough comprehensive plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County subject to conditions proposed by the Development Services Department. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, is there anyone that would like to testify in support? Seeing no one, anyone in opposition to this application. All right, if you all could line up. How many do we have? How many people? Six, did I count one? If you could all line up and we'll figure out the time. There's 15 minutes total, which we will divide up between you as equally as we can. If you wanna have one speaker and then come and just put your name on the record so you preserve your right to speak to the Board of County Commissioners, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Absolutely, and then if they if they want to put their names on the record, just and just for the name and address to preserve their right to speak to the board, they can do that as well, or the two of you can speak for them. So you just put your name and address in, and then sign in with the clerk. Good evening. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, my name is Stuart Cox of the 10620 Burner Lane, Riverview, Florida. I've been there about 15 years. And we love it there, and we have it very easy. Uh, we're working hard to develop and keep it up. Uh, when I moved there, we were supposed to have no problems with anybody building behind us. And that went down the drain, I guess, a couple years ago when a developer came in and developed in the wetlands. And not only did he develop, he built it five foot above ours. Now, there's no reason we have to give up our road because the property in question goes directly on to, is directly on 301. So they have plenty of room to put a driveway or whatever they want in there. That's all. All right, thank you, sir, for your testimony. If you could please sign in. That's all right, it happens. <laughs> Uh, my name is Anthony Tritt, I'm president of HOA, the Riverview Estates Condominium Association at 10603 Burner Lane, Riverview, Florida, 33578. I think I got all that on there. Um, watch my phone on a lot. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, our road that we actually live on, that they're wanting to propose building their site on, is actually a private road. It has a dead end. It doesn't go no further. Um, our road is very private. Home is a place of, place of peace and enjoyment. Please don't allow this development to destroy our community and quality of life. There are lots of developments that we would be fine with, but 24-hour dog daycare parking smell, along with the description of utilities, is not among them. Our school bus stop is at this here at the end of the roadway. We have 46 children that live in our neighborhood. Four from age four to 15. From four to five is 26 of them. Our families are one of all that look after each other's kids, whether it's on the school or play or in our neighborhood. Forgetting the community, we are a forgotten community with no crime and family friendliness. There is no access to this property unless you cut through our private road. Our private road is where all our kids, is it. it's one way in, one way out. There's no other access to enter their facility. As it runs down our property for 301, our water inlet also runs through this here property. There is no other water inlet to this property, which is what we are. We're on a community water bill. With HOA fees, we, I pay, we pay the water bill itself. The village should not be allowed to do any additional costs upon the community. Whoops. Any costs associated with modifying or rezoning or replanning or removing of our water lines to be placed somewhere else, costs upon the community, it should be all right there, and that has not been asked of the development. In addition, costs should be borne by the parties seeking to modify the plan. We do not wish to have our road used for commercial traffic, which puts our family and kids at risk also to have more traffic come down our road as it dead ends and would bring more crime and people in our community. As our road, as they said, our road is a shell road. We have a problem with drainage. We have what they're calling wetland is our only drain. It drains to 301. We flood with a foot, about a foot of water every time it rains in our neighborhoods. Um, there's one other lady here who wants to speak also on behalf of it. We just don't, we won't want to, we like our family. It's family owned, it's family precise. Everyone's family takes care of everybody. That's really it, I guess. All right, thank Alicia. you for your testimony. You could please sign in. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Um. Alicia Salinas, 10608 Burner Lane, Riverview, Florida, 33578. Um, my husband and I actually own four properties uh, with our um, close and um, extended family on Burner Lane. So we have a lot of interest on what's going on here. Um, our major concern is um, the flooding. Um, we understand that um, anything that's built on the property in question um, is going to require building up. Um, we feel that Hillsborough County has failed um, the community of Burner Lane in the past few years by allowing development on the south side and the north side um, and the west side of Burner Lane. So basically right now Burner Lane is um, sits about five foot lower than um, the development around us. Um, the development to the north of us actually took away our natural downgrade to the lake that sits there. And so now when it rains, all of the water um, pools in Burner Lake. Um, all the families there right now are currently struggling just to keep flooring in our homes. Um, we are concerned that additional building would burn additional flooding, and we would ask Hillsborough County uh, Planning to make sure that whatever plans um, are approved, that they require adequate drainage so um, as to not continually um, worsen our situation with the flooding. Um, our second concern is, um, and not by priority by any means, um, is our children. Um, if you'll allow me to set the stage for Burner Lane, when it was originally established back in the 80s, um, it was um, mobile homes uh, for either uh, retirees or um, couples uh, that um, uh, basically didn't have children. Um, now Burner Lane is a very diverse community um, with lots of children. Um, actually, 46 children um, get on a school bus every morning at the corner of Burner Lane and 301. Um, we want to make sure that their safety is ensured. Um, we understand. Um, we spoke with the gentleman that's um, applying for uh, the permit, uh, and he explained to us just outside in the hallway that um, they are required to put in a sidewalk. 
um, that would greatly um, help us, but there is still concern about how the children would come across the entrance to the business um, during the morning uh, pickup time and afternoon drop off. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there was also concern about the noise and how the um, animal waste was going to be disposed of to ensure that we didn't have to drive home every night and hear dogs barking and stuff like that. But um, he was kind enough to explain um, the, uh, I guess, the safety catches that they have in place that would alleviate that. So um, right now, uh, like I said, it's to make sure that the, the plans aren't going to worsen our flooding are gonna ensure that our children stay safe and that they can continue to be picked up at the corner of Burner Lane and 301 because we have heard through um, uh, the grapevine that um, Hillsborough County Department of Transportation for Schools is planning to change the bus stop to the corner of 301 in Sims because of this new development. If that were the case, you would have 46 children ages four through 13 walking four blocks over along 301 at peak traffic areas in the morning and in the afternoon. We just feel that that is not unsafe. In addition, there's four uh, roads that they would actually have to cross in, two of them into major developments. Um, it's just not conducive and appropriate for children to be put in that situation. So we would like to ensure that whatever goes in there, we can continue to have the bus stop at the corner of 301 and Burner Lane. Um, uh, other than that, I think our chairman for the HOA spoke about the costs associated with moving the existing utilities, which would probably have to happen anyways because there's going to be excavation um, and filling in there. So we feel that um, we've been there for a very long time and we should not, the community should not have to uh, bear the burden of cost to us for um, something that we're not asking for. All right, That's thank it. you for your testimony. Right, thank I appreciate you. it. If mm -hmm. you could sign in. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, my name is Ron Arbisi. I live at 10617 Burner Lane, Riverview, 33578. And I wanna, I wanna start first, I wanna thank the applicant. It sounds like the applicant has gone to a great deal of trouble to try to accommodate the, the local community. And I appreciate that. Um, I, I want to reiterate and support what Alicia and Tony both had to say, but I also want to make it very, very clear too that the, the sticking point with me, the big question mark is still those utilities because those utilities, they run through this property. The existing agreement that was with the previous property owner, the long-term property owner that had been there for a long time and it's on file with the county is that uh, any development there would bear the cost of moving that water and electrical. And uh, because it, it, it's a, a significant expense, expense to lay on a small community that, as she said, is not asking for this development. And uh, I mean, we're certainly willing to accommodate businesses, but we don't want a business that's going to come in and then start by laying a huge financial burden on the community in order to accommodate them. And so I, I would simply ask, I, I appreciate, they've gone to a great deal of trouble, as I said, to alleviate the concerns about the noise and the fencing and, and the paving of the road that I understand them to say is going to go past their driveway to uh, include Burner Lane. And that's, I've, they've gone a great deal, of, great deal of the way necessary to alleviate my concerns. I just want that very explicit guarantee that that previous and binding agreement to bear the cost of moving our utilities is honored. I mean, my understanding is that when you buy a piece of property, you buy the obligations and so forth that come with it. And so I would just would like it to be very clear that that is included. And thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Yes. Good evening. I'm sorry. All right. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Lee Sanelli, Thank you. Uh, some people, uh, I my little lady, I sign in with the people. So. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. If you want to sign in with the clerk's office, yeah. thank you for coming down. I appreciate it. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Maribella Barker, and I live in 10623. Um, Burner Line Road, uh, Burner Line. Speak a little River closer, View. just so we hear you. 
Riverview. There you go. Florida. Three three five seven eight. And I think pretty much I'm okay with Tony. He already spoke and the lady. She already said everything. But what worries me the most is um, the bus stop for my children. I have four children, and that's what um, I'm worried about. It. Cause like she said, they're gonna walk away like four blocks from all the way where we live. And there's a lot of traffic in 301. So that's um, that's pretty much my worry. All right, well thank you for your testimony, I thank appreciate you. it. All right, does that conclude your group? Is that everybody? All right, well thank you for uh, that, I appreciate it. Then we will close opposition testimony. County staff, um, Mr. Ratliff, perhaps if you could help me with uh, the transportation issue, their requirement. Bef before Mr. Ratliff gets up, I yeah, just want to remind those absolutely. who spoke that if they have any questions regarding uh, filing of oral argument to preserve their right to speak to the board, that uh, uh, Fernando Quinones is here to help them with that. Those yes, questions. so there is paperwork and deadlines to file on it if you want to speak before the Board of County Commissioners. Yeah, so <laughs> there's a. No, no apologies necessary. There's a gentleman, a staff person in the back that can help you with all of that. Okay. Absolutely. Mr. Ratliff, help me with the, uh, their commitment and obligation for improvement to this road. So, um, and just to address something we heard tonight, um, uh, they may prefer, and I think the applicant to a certain extent did as well, obviously commercial uses want the best access they can have. Florida Department of Transportation um, was not willing to approve additional access. So essentially they said what the existing zoning calls for is shared access and that's all we're going to honor in terms of. And that access uh, is to the burner lane. Correct. Burner road. Yes. yes. And D, you know, uh, DOT is, as it is a state facility, is the one who has to authorize um, permits to that, um, to that roadway. So with regard to the uh, easement itself, um, there is on the plat, it shows as an ingress egress easement, uh, variable width between 50 and going down to 30 feet. Um, it is also mentioned in the declaration of condominium. The uh, applicant will have to, you know, exactly kind of put on the record what that means. I can only look so far into it, but um, it does mention that it's a non exclusive easement um, for ingress and egress. Um, and that is in a se separate document that's reported from the plat. Uh, um, essentially, the applicant is going to have to widen the roadway um, because it is substandard, um, and, and that's going to be done in accordance with the design exception. Um, that sidewalk is going to be all or partially outside of the existing recorded easement, so the applicant is going to have to record an easement in favor of the uh, existing owners to allow them to transit across that property um, without any issues. So they will improve the road. To, to what extent are they obligated to do it? I mean, essentially, it's going to be a full reconstruction. So they're going to be placing uh, 24 feet, I believe, of pavement here. Let me go back and make sure I am. And then yeah. an additional uh, area to accommodate the new sidewalk. Correct. Yep, they're going to be putting in type F curbing in lieu of the Miami curbing. There's going to be, it's going to be saw cut in certain locations to allow it to, to drain. Um, and uh, essentially uh, right the sidewalk along the south side as well all right and the question regarding the questions regarding the school uh, drop-off area uh, I really can't address that I mean the school district of Hillsborough County sets school bus pickup locations I, I know it frequently changes based on you know their their own programmatic issues and other uh, and other things so um, I can't speak to to how or if or why that's that's moving um, there there is something called hazardous walking condition review and so if there is um, uh, an issue with the the new route that students would take to the bus stop um, that can be evaluated um, and essentially if there is a problem there there would be uh, improvements that would have to be done perhaps you can after the hearing share that information with these residents if that becomes an issue just outside the purview of this hearing Sure. I think those requests are made through the school district of Hillsborough County itself. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for your testimony. Thank I appreciate you. it. Mr. Grady, did you have any additional comments? Ms. Heinrich? Are we allowed to ask questions? No. 
I've closed. No, I'm sorry. Opposition testimony is closed, and that's all we can take from you all. Go ahead, Ms. Heinrich. Uh, I was just Michelle Heinrich, Development Services. I did want to add on the record that the condition does um, contain, and it's not proposed for modification, in an existing condition, which states that the utilities that are located in the office parcel that serve um, the residential portion are to be relocated prior to this site getting a certificate of occupancy. And that's not proposed for any change under this application. All right, thank you for that clarification. All right, then with that, we'll go back to the applicant who has five minutes for a rebuttal. Good evening. Good evening. Mike Rajewski, 2959 Fruitville Road, Sarasota, Florida, 34237. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't get an opportunity to speak to some of the residents before we met tonight, so I, I did get a, a few minutes to speak with them outside uh, to hopefully ease some of the concerns that they had. Um, uh, we're, we're a community-based business. Um, more than 90% of our business will come from a 1.5-mile radius of our business, so keeping good relations with our neighbors is a top priority. Um, to, I think, the lady just before us actually clarified that, but I wanted to state that we, we were actually already intending to bear the cost of moving the utilities on that property, so um, that, of course, uh, should not be uh, an issue. Um, and, um, you know, having children of my own that are also young, 9 and 12, I, I understand their concerns. What we're really hoping to do is um, improve what's currently there. Uh, I believe they talked about more than 40 children walking down the road, which is a dirt road today. We're hoping to put that sidewalk in that would maybe help with that situation. Um, and ultimately, the things that we're talking about today as far as changing, um, we're not really uh, making the situation that they currently have worse. As far as, obviously, we have to retain our own water. We have to do uh, what we have to do with the road. Um, we're hoping to hopefully you know, make that better. I also made a commitment to uh, the people that I spoke with today that uh, portions of that gravel road that currently uh, are there that are holding some of that water, we would maybe help them during construction phase to, you know, bring that up a little bit um, and to, to uh, do whatever small improvements we could to to help them with with that water because that we saw at one point they were actually crossing over this commercial plot just to get around that water. I think that's been stopped now, but at one point that was the issue. So. Um, our commitment is to within the community. We want to make sure that that, that they understand that, and um, and we'll continue to work with them over the next couple of weeks before the next meeting to make sure that most of the things that they asked for, you know, are are in somewhat um, taken care of. All right. Thank you. Thank you for okay. that. I appreciate it. Sir. Ms. Swift, yes. did you have any additional comments? No, thank you. I think he covered everything. All right. Thank you for that. Then with that, we'll close major modification 19-1017 and go to the next case. Uh, the final item then on tonight's agenda is item E6, uh, rezoning application 19-1038. Uh, the applicant is Lennar Homes, LLC. The request is to rezone from residential single family conventional nine to a planned development. Uh, Andy Barnes will provide staff recommendation after presentation by the applicant. Good evening. Good evening. William Malloy, 325 South Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. Um, from my perspective and hopefully from yours, this is a very clean cut case. There's nothing that I need to add to the staff report or recommendations. We're in total agreement with it. And uh, absence any opposition that I need to rebut, I'm happy to rest on that. All right, thank you so much. You. Development services, please. Good evening again, Annie Barnes, Development Services. Uh, the applicant is requesting re rezone approximately 4.03 acres from uh, RSC 9 to plan development. Uh, proposed development is for 36 uh, single family attached dwelling units. The subject site is located within the Greater Palm River Community Plan area, northwest of the intersection of 78th Street South and Camden Field Parkway. The applicant is pro pro proposing specific lot development standards, such as minimum lot size with setbacks, lot coverage, and maximum building height. Um, the applicant has proposed two cross access connections to the north and south of the subject property through um, an existing plan development, PD 051947. Therefore, no uh, new ingress or egress is proposed off of 78th Street South as the project will serve as an extension to the larger surrounding PD 
which has multiple access points to the surrounding street network. Uh, the area is largely comprised of single family residential developments. Um, and therefore staff finds the request compatible with the surrounding development pattern and recommends approval with conditions. All right, thank you for that, appreciate it. Planning Commission. Jawan Haley, Planning Commission, the subject properties adopted future land use category is residential six. The subject property is located within the urban service area. It is located within the limits of the Greater Palm River Community Plan. The proposed plan development allowing a maximum of 36 single family attached residential parcels would provide a development pattern comparable and compatible with the surrounding development pattern and allow for a use that is permitted within the residential six, the residential six future land use classification. The proposed single family attached residential subdivision provides for appropriate infill development in an area of the Palm River community that provides appropriate infrastructure to support the proposed development. The proposed site plan also provides for opportunities for interconnectivity with the adjacent development by providing a roadway connection to the north and south, consistent with policy direction of the comprehensive plan. The site is within the urban service area and is subject to future land use element policy 1.3 pertaining to minimum density. The proposed density of 36 dwelling units meets the minimum density threshold established by set of policy. The applicant is not only meeting the minimum density requirement, but is also requesting a flex of the residential nine future land use category to the east, which would increase the allowable maximum, dens the, the allowable maximum density of the subject site. Per future land use element policy 7.3, through the application of the flex provision, the land use category boundaries are deemed to extend beyond the precise line to include property adjoining or separated by a man-made or natural feature from the existing boundary line. The line may be relocated a maximum, a maximum of 500 feet from the existing land use boundary of the adopted land use plan map. Right of way is not included in the measurement of the 500 foot flex. The subject site is located fully within the 500 feet measurement and therefore the entire 4.03 acres can be considered for a flex from, from the Res 9 future land use category. With the flex, the applicant is requesting nine dwelling units per acre, which is consistent with the Res 9 category. Per future land use element policy 7.4, the criteria for a flex request are as follows. The availability and adequacy of public facilities to serve the to serve the proposed development accommodated by the flex, the, compatibil the compatibility with surrounding land uses and their density and intensity, the, the utilization of the flex furthers other goals, objectives, and policies of the future land use element. The flex request is consistent with the criteria above as there are existing public facilities to serve the proposed development and the request is consistent and compatible with the surrounding land uses and their density and intensity. The site is surrounded mainly by single family residential development, both attached and detached units, which is compatible with the single family residential attached units that are being proposed. Overall, the proposed single family attached residential subdivision with a flex request provides for a development that is sensitive to the surrounding development while also allowing for additional density within the urban service area. Based upon these considerations, the Planning Commission staff finds the proposed plan development consistent with the future of Hillsboro Comprehensive Plan for Unincorporated Hillsboro County, subject to the conditions proposed by the, by the Development Services Department. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, it doesn't look like we have anyone in favor or in opposition. <laughs> Mr. Grady, anything further? All right, Mr. Malloy? No, ma'am. All right, you. thank you for that. I will close rezoning 19-1038 and adjourn the hearing. Thank you all for your time and testimony.